Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Gante, and you already know what time it is. It's time to use your brains and become scientists. This past lesson, we were talking about pollution and conservation, and you learned about what pollution was, what waste was. So let's review in the beginning of this lesson. What is pollution? Pollution happens when the environment is contaminated or dirtied by waste, chemicals, and other harmful substances. There are three main forms of pollution, air, water, and land. So for this particular lesson, we're only going to be talking about what is land pollution. So land pollution is anything that damages or contaminates the land. There are many causes of land pollution, from the trash that we throw away in our homes to waste that's produced in giant factories. So in the next slide, we're going to be going over the different types of land pollution. All right, boys and girls, so there are five different types of land pollution. So the first one, we have agricultural land pollution. Number two, we have non-biodegradable solid waste. Number three, we have industrial waste. Number four, we have deforestation. And number five, we have mining. And in the next couple of slides, I'm going to be going over each one and also showing you a picture so that you can get an idea of what we're talking about. So the first one that we're going to go over is agricultural land pollution. This can be fertilizers as well as pesticides or and insecticides on agricultural land. These are all loaded with chemicals. So the chemicals kill the pests and they increase the production of vegetables, fruits, any kind of crop that we're growing, but it also strips the soil of its minerals and its nutrients. This is not just harmful to humans, but it's harmful to animals, fish, and birds. So that's the first type of pollution. The second one that we have is non-biodegradable solid waste. So there is a lot of waste that's generated in our homes, schools, hospitals, shops, and even where your parents work, their workplaces. Most of this waste is non-biodegradable. It can take up to millions of years to decompose completely. And this waste finds its way to dumping areas. So in turn, it results in landfills. So when we throw all this waste all the way to the trash, from the video that we saw before, that trash then goes all the way to the landfills and it starts loading up those landfills. Plastic products are the most common and they pile up over time and it becomes very difficult to eliminate them. So as you can see in this picture that we have to my right, the plastic bottles, plastic containers, they're just piling up and piling up because they don't decompose. All right, boys and girls, so the next one that we have is industrial waste. And another major source of land pollution is industrial waste. These wastes include the following, chemicals, plastics, metals, and paints. So plastics, once again, is included in industrial waste. For example, Power plants, like the ones that are right here behind, release chemical wastes and they dispose of them in landfills. So once again, you have another place, which is an industrial plant, and they're disposing of all this plastic and just overall waste and just sending it to the landfills. So I want you to pause and think, what's going to happen over time in these landfills? So the fourth one that we have is deforestation. So this pollution occurs when we cut down trees to clear land for agriculture. So remember that's farming, construction, mining, or other economic activities. So I want you to think when you have deforestation, it leads to a total loss of the land's value. Specifically, boys and girls, I want you to think about animal habitats. What do you think is happening to the animals that are living in these habitats that go through deforestation and their home and ecosystem is completely disrupted. And lastly, we have mining. 
So mining is the extraction of materials and ores from under the Earth's surface, and it also contributes to land pollution. After mining, we leave the land completely defaced and exposed to erosion. And remember, we said erosion was that wearing away of the Earth's surface, so those rocks and soil, we are, that everything is facing erosion and it is moving off. And this further whittles down the quality and the value of the land. So real quick, look at this picture. Mining is going on, whether it's through oil or other natural resources, and look at how stripped the land is. So now that we talked about the different types of land pollution, well, let's talk about the effects because every cause has an effect that follows it. Because of land pollution, some of the effects that touch almost every living area of the world includes water that isn't safe to drink, polluted soil, which leads to a loss of fertile land for agriculture, climate change, which can cause flash floods and irregular rainfalls, the endangerment and extinction of species and wildlife, habitat shifting, where some animals are forced to flee where they live in order to survive, and an increase in wildfires due to polluted areas often becoming very dry. So I want you to think about how all those effects listed affect not only animals or not only the land, but how does that affect us? Think about it. If we do not have water that is safe to drink, boys and girls, we cannot survive. We need water to survive. So I want you to think about the effects of land pollution. How can we prevent land pollution? Number one, using fewer pesticides and chemicals in agriculture. Two, reforestation. So instead of cutting down those forests and using them for whatever needs, we can go back and plant and revive forests to bring back that natural habitat and environment to animals. Now, boys and girls, on an individual level, there is a lot that we can do to reduce our contribution to land pollution. And one of the things that we can do is to reuse or recycle items that are creating waste. This can mean creating a completely different item from a material that we had so it can still serve a purpose and we can reuse it again. Can also be educated on what can be recycled and where these recycling sites are in our local areas. So jumping straight into it, boys and girls, we're going to get started with our experiment today. We're going to be making a landfill with household items that you can find in your kitchen. So now let's go to my workstation and let's get started. All right, boys and girls, so we're going to be creating a landfill today. So what you're going to need is a plastic bottle. Now I have two types. I have a large one for this experiment, but if you do not have a two liter bottle, you can use a regular water bottle. You're going to need some plotting soil, a pair of scissors, some trash, a plastic, an old plastic bag that maybe you used for your lunch, and a sock. Don't worry, it's clean. It's just the one, one of the singles that hasn't found its partner yet, so we're going to recycle it. You have your bottle rinsed out. We are going to cut along this line. So I did this with a pair of scissors, and this is what you're gonna want to end up with. If you're doing it with a water bottle, this will be your end result. And we're not really going to be using this piece, but hey, you can always repurpose and reuse this as a funnel. So we're gonna move that to the side and we're just going to be using this piece. Now, boys and girls, the first layer of our landfill is going to be soil. Now, this is because in a true landfill, all the way underneath all that trash, the true layer of land is the natural soil layer. So here, naturally, I have poured my soil down to that first little level. 
The next layer of our landfill is going to be that plastic wrap. And the plastic wrap is going to represent that geomembrane, which is a thin plastic sheet, again, that serves to prevent the draining of the landfill. So it's kind of soaking up all the toxins so it doesn't go down to the bottom of the soil. So here I am getting my reused Ziploc bag and I'm just putting it inside. The next layer of my landfill is going to be my cotton sock that I'm going to reuse. Now you're going to want to cut your sock and place it so that the plastic is completely covered. So there we go. And the cotton balls are going to represent that next layer of the landfill. So here we have, we have our soil at the very bottom of the earth, and then we have that plastic layer that's protecting those toxins from seeping through. And now we have our layer of cotton. Now our next layer is you guessed it, we're gonna start moving into trash. Now, boys and girls, this is trash that I have dug out from my kitchen trash can. So as you can see, I have moldy tomatoes in here. I have banana peels. I have some stems from grapes. I have plastic. I have the little Coca-Cola label from my water bottles. I have some paper towels in here, some bottle caps. So this is going to be that layer of the landfill where you're going to you see that trash. So now boys and girls, I want you to look at my landfill. So now we're going to add another layer of plastic. Our next layer is going to have, you guessed it, more soil. All right, boys and girls, so now look at my final landfill. All right, we'll do a little 360. You can see that soil in the bottom, that first plastic layer that we have. Then we have the layer of the sock, which represents all that material that gets thrown in the trash when we don't need it. We have our layer of trash or compost, and then we have another plastic layer that kind of sets that barrier for those leak, those toxins to just soak up. And finally, we topped it off with our final layer of soil, and I really packed it in here. Boys and girls, this is where you can now see the effects of a landfill. So I have planted three seeds. We are going to see over the course of a week if anything happens. Now remember, this is an experiment. We are scientists. We persevere when things don't go right. So I'm going to have this sitting out for a week and we're going to see if anything sprouts up at the top. So this is your job. If you want to try this at home, you can see if anything sprouts up for you. So now boys and girls, remember we are scientists. So as you complete this experiment at home, what happens to the trash over time? What do you think is going to happen to the trash in my landfill over time? Do you notice anything that's changing now? I'll check back, but do you notice anything that's changing? In future videos, we will see if anything changed. Can air or water go all the way through your model? Think about that, can it? How is this like a regular landfill? How is this like a landfill where we dump all of our waste? And the last question is, what pieces of trash went into my landfill that could have been recycled. So as I leave you today, I want you to think about those questions. As usual, we are scientists. We always need to persevere, ask questions, and think. I'll see you on the next one, and I hope you do this landfill too.